Today I'm going to be discussing some great tips if you want to get your gin drinking friends or your customers into rum. Let's dive in. Cheers. Now look, before we go any further, let's just get one thing out of the way. It is absolutely not necessary to convert gin drinkers to rum. Gin is going nowhere. It's here to stay. It was here, you know, in the UK, in Great Britain, long before rum was. You know, it's been around centuries and centuries. Gin ain't going anywhere. What will disappear very, very slowly, and we've started to see it now, is simply the poor. Because the gin bubble has now virtually burst, the poorer quality gins, the excessively flavoured and excessively sweeter gins are starting to disappear. You know, it was a trend. Businesses that didn't cotton on to the gin or gin distilleries that popped up not cotton on to it, that it was a trend and the bubble was going to burst. You are now starting to see them disappear. But the quality gins, the gins that have done properly, the gins that have got quite a bit of marketing budget behind them, they're going to be around for a lot of years yet. So don't think that gin is just going to miraculously disappear. It isn't. The poor quality stuff is but the better stuff will always stay around. So if you have gin loving friends that kind of want to explore rum, or if you have customers in your pubs and bars where you kind of really want to steadily push them into the rum trend that's coming, how do you kind of wean them yourselves off uh, or wean them off gin and tonics and get them into the rum world? How do you do that? Now to simply go from getting someone to drink a gin to a rum is like chalk and cheese. It's like trying to get someone that drinks red wine having it storched onto red wine, uh, trying to get them to drink beer. It ain't going to happen. They are like two completely different things. So you kind of have to look at what gin is and kind of why people love it so much. So gin is gin and tonic. This is rum, by the way. Uh, I'll show you exactly what this is in a moment. But gin is largely made up. Gin lovers love gin because of the botanicals, the delicate flavours and the tonic water. OK, they're not going to start drinking rum and coke. You don't go from gin and tonic to rum and coke. That just isn't going to happen. So you kind of have to look at what this the gin breaks down into and try and get a rum to kind of do that role. So, of course, the obvious stepping stone from a gin and tonic is a rum and tonic. Now, this may seem obvious. It may seem easy at first glance, but I promise you it's not it really isn't because not many rums lend themselves to be drunk with tonic. OK, and we will kind of evolve this. Don't think this is just simply a rum and tonic video. We're going to go down a couple of little parts in here. Uh, but you start off with the rum. Now, there is to me and this is just a collection I have. There's no doubt a few others. I don't really know of others, but there's, there's this growing trend of botanical rums. And all botanical rums are is rum at the base distilled with uh, uh, botanicals, different botanicals. That's all that is, for instance. That's what I'm drinking there, the Forum. OK, from Portsmouth Distillery. And to break that down into what gin is, gin is vodka. And I'm not just hating on because that's exactly what it is. Gin is vodka that is then distilled, flavoured with juniper and other botanicals. That's the only differentiation. You know, the base spirit of gin is vodka. The base spirit of that is rum. Take out the juniper. OK, and all you're left with is a vodka flavoured uh, sort of liquid or a rum flavoured liquid. That's kind of what it is. So this botanical rum sort of scene is popping up and there are some some that are better than others and some that kind of take you on different flavour paths. I really like the Forum, the Portsmouth one, because while that does kind of give you this sort of grassy herbal note from the actual sugar cane there, you kind of do get that sort of molasses feel. It kind of makes you think in your head, get rid of the juniper, you're actually thinking you're, you, you're drinking gin and tonic here because you kind of, it's in there. But the finish when it goes down your palate, down your throat, the finish is undeniably rum. And it's got that sweeter kind of vibe to it without it being sweet that people will love. So you've got that as a botanical rum distilled in the UK. Another botanical rum we've got there is Mad City. Caribbean rum at the base of this, but again, pretty much done in the same way. Um, except they import the Caribbean rum over to the UK. They then redistill it with the botanicals or infuse it with the botanicals, however they choose to do it. And they've got a botanical rum there. The same with Five Rivers. Again, you know, this is more Indian led. Think of this, actually, for the gin lovers, think of this as the opia of Rum World because it has got those sort of Indian, native Indian kind of botanicals that go in there. But all three of those are cracking rum and tonic rums. But of course, you have got a few flavoured rums that kind of I would put in here as well. I mean, these are this is a botanical rum. Again, it is rum that's distilled and not kind of um, flavoured up with sweet stuff. It's like redistilled. This one's like coconut. So it's redistilled with coconut 
if you like. So yes, while it is a coconut rum, it's still a botanical rum. It's got the botanicals in there that kind of give you that feeling that you're drinking something like gin without the flipping horrible, nasty juniper stuff in the bottom of it. Now look, I realized I was talking largely to people in the UK there because obviously around the world, you know, botanical botanical rum is not a thing around the rum it's purely because of the gin market that's why we've got it in the uk but there are some other rums that i think really do lend themselves to a rum and tonic now as i said i don't think all rums do a lot of aged rums definitely won't for me go with the tonic they will go with another mixer but not necessarily tonic and we're going to get off to a, a couple of other drinks in a second but i just want to touch on three rums that i've got here worldwide available that i do think would be banging to convert uh, gin and tonic drinkers to rum and tonic. So uh, they're right behind me. I think as a white, not all white rums will work, but I think this one, because it's got that sort of fruit led to it, uh, sort of tropical notes, I think really does shine through in tonic. I've actually got Equiano as well. I really do love, I've tried this, I really do, do love Equiano, the white, unaged Equiano, whatever you want to call it, um, grassy coloured Equiano. I really do think that makes it a phenomenal rum and tonic as well. But the kind of gold, if you want to go down that route for me, is the Plantation Fiji. I think that it was actually Nick from Identity Drinks that got me. I'd never even thought of it. He got me onto that during COVID, I think 2020. He said, try this. Um, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Begin because of the fruit led character of that. And it hasn't really got much barrel aging that comes through in the rum compared to some of the other rums, I think these are fantastic rum and tonic rums. Now, before we talk about other mixers, there's two other th things that I want to kind of talk about as well very quickly, because I know some of the sugar cane juice uh, people are going to be thinking, well, hang on a minute. that's a I think this, as much as I do think something like sugar cane agriculture will work as a rum and tonic, I think that is a touch too far to convert gin drinkers to rum. I'm not denying it makes a great rum and tonic, but it is a little bit too far for the novice to dive into a rum and tonic. But I do think uh, Clarins, Agricoles do lend themselves very well to the rum and tonic, but they are more for experienced rum drinkers. The other thing I kind of want to touch on is bitters. Bitters can play a huge role in this because if you've got uh, a decent sort of rum, in there a light a sort of a lighter white rum in there you can play about with different bitters just to add sort of complexity without using uh, without losing the rum in there and this is my favorite brand of course it is miss bitters bitters hopefully they'll all be on the close-up but just to kind of talk you through the, the easy ones first off um what's it, it was sumac and kiwi again speaks to it speaks to itself pineapple and star anise uh that one is green strawberry and mark one mark one is a pepper We've got that. We've got grapefruit. Grapefruit, touch of like 12 drops in that is absolutely delicious. But again, the big one for me that I would probably break out is the Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Peach, burdock, uh, chrysanthemum, and yuzu in there. I think that's right. I can never get them right. White peach, chrysanthemum, burdock, and yuzu. I think those bitters are remarkable. With like 12 drops in there, which is equivalent of one dash, one mil goes into that just transform it without losing what that rum is but it makes it absolutely banging drink now of course the other way you can go is just actually not touching tonic at all and actually trying to convert people onto other mixers and that is actually quite easy because actually very few tonic waters actually have quinine in them the indian tonic waters do because that's part and parcel of being an indian tonic water they have to have quinine but if it doesn't say indian on it the sheer fact of the matter is they've got marginal bits of quinine in there, if any quinine they are just simply mixes or sodas and that's where some brands like this come in and the other one i really wanted here and i can't find i can't find it but i thought i had one it's like a sicilian lemon or old school bitter lemon because bitter lemon and uh, rum is it just works fantastically well and I don't love Fever Tree for much, but they do have a few mixers which really work. And Sicilian Lemon is a great kind of mixer for that. I just realised where it was. It wasn't what I was thinking. Uh, this is actually Sicilian Lemonade, but close enough. That will kind of work, and that's kind of a, a decent run. But I've got something better coming up in a second. But these are all mixers that actually pubs and bars, and you can get quite easily. You know, we're talking Waitrose for these, online for that, most supermarkets for those quite easy the double dutch again uh, the cucumber and watermelon is really going to appeal to uh, that with agriculture is fantastic but that is really going to appeal to that the, the palate that does love gin and tonic the same with this this is secford sodas lime mint and cacao not sweet 
it's soda first and foremost, but those flavors do really work well. So I think these, and this is the Franklin Sons pineapple and almond. So I think these are again, great gateway highballs for the gin and tonic drinker that really wants to get into rum. But there is also one other brand that obviously I want to pay homage to because, you know, I, I flipping well love them. And yes, this is a paid promotion. I, you know, I've said this time and time again recently, you know, the start of this year. Um, we do kind of work closely together, but it's only because I really do love these mixes. These mixes, I think, deserve to be in every bot pub, bar, bottle chiller up and down the UK. I think they play a huge important role for rum. They're the only mixer dedicated to rum. Uh, we've got four in the range. The citrus, which actually for me is better than the fever tree Sicilian bitter lemon in that. So it's just more rounded to that. We've got the tropical with pineapple and coconut notes. We've got the hedgerow with blackberry and rose. And we've got the spiced, which is cinnamon and ginger. Now the point I want to make about these is they are not your ginger beers they are not your coke sweetness they are not your even your ginger ale sweetness these for me will appeal massively to those gin and tonic drinkers that kind of want to experience rum uh, as a decent mixer because they are really really good with they're just low in carbonation and low in sweetness so i think you know to appreciate rum fully i think this is the brand that does it we they are if you know if you want to try this brand if you're in the uk and you want to try this brand there is a link in the description below that gets you 50 percent off your first order and i but i would encourage every single pub bar hotel restaurant to seriously look at these and kind of chat to Dan and Casey because I really do think this will play a huge role in kind of making rum accessible because not everyone wants coke not everyone wants ginger and they are the simple mixers that inherently people think of rum these are the guys that can kind of broaden people's horizons